All right, so today we're going to talk about how you can use law of signs to to solve triangle problems. And something real important, we worked or we've been working with sine, cosine, and tangent for kind of the last week. And sine, cosine, and tangent, that those are all used on right triangles, okay? So when we're talking about the law of sines to solve triangle problems, law of sines is used on non-right triangles. And the law of signs states that, let's get a triangle on your paper here. If we have triangle ABC, and then we label the sides opposite of each angle, same letter but in lowercase. So opposite of angle A is side A, and opposite of angle B is side B, and opposite of angle C is side C. What the law of sines states is that the sine of angle A over the length of side A is equal to sine of angle B over the length of side B. And that's also equal to sine of angle C over side C. So typically what you're going to do is you're going to write a proportion in order to solve for a missing side length in a non-right triangle today. So if you look at example one and that's on the bottom of page 588. And what they're asking you to do is to find X and we're working to the nearest tenth and here's the triangle that they give you. triangle ABC angle A is 97 degrees side AB is the X that's the side you're trying to find the length of and side BC is 16 angle C is 21 degrees So here's how the law of signs works. In this problem right now, we are given, you see how we're given an angle and its opposite side, right? And then you're also given another angle and we're trying to find the length of its opposite side. So we can write a proportion. We can say the sine of 97 over its opposite side, which is 16, is equal to 
sine of 21 over its opposite side. And in this case, its opposite side is the x that we're trying to find. So who can tell me how to solve a proportion? Anybody? Yeah. Crisscross multiply, right? We've been doing that for a while now. So crisscross multiply. I like the x on the left, so I'm going to take the sine 97 times x. So we can just leave it. Sine 97x is equal to sine 21 times 16. There's our crisscross multiply. So in order to solve for x, now we're going to divide both sides by sine 97. And the sine 97s are going to cancel. The x falls down, and we're equal to in your calculator for the numerator, all right, type in 21 sine times 16. Make sure you hit equals. And then while that 5.7 is sitting on your screen, you can push divided by 97 sine and hit equals again. And you should get 5.8. We were, round to, we were asked to round to the nearest tenth. My calculator is already set at second fix one. So there's the length of X or the value of X, which represents side AB. Everybody okay with that? Sine of an angle over its opposite side <clears throat> is equal to the sine of an angle over its opposite side. So the guided practice on the bottom of 588, get that problem 1A drawn on your paper, please. We've got another triangle ABC. Angle A is 78, angle B is 60, side BC is 8, side AC is X. All right, so this is another problem that's really straightforward. We've got an angle measure and its opposite side, and we have an angle measure and the side opposite it we're trying to solve. So write the proportion, sine 78 over 8 is equal to sine 60 over the x. Crisscross multiply. And now we can divide both sides by sine 78. Sine 78s on the left cancel, and our x is equal to 60 sine times 8. Make sure you hit the equal sign, and then you're going to divide by 78 sine. And I got 7.1. Anybody not get 7.1? Anybody have a question after those two examples? Nod your head up and down if you feel like it's fairly simple. Nod your head left or right if you uh, you think it's harder than last week. All right, good. Draw that problem 1B on your paper, please.
we got vertices R, Q, and S. Q is 37 degrees. R, Q is 8. S is 54. And we're trying to find the X, and the X represents side QS. So as you look at this problem, after doing the first two examples, is there anything that you see that's missing? Any piece of information missing? The sine of an angle over its opposite side equals the sine of an angle over its opposite side. You see the angle that corresponds to the side with the X? What's it missing? The angle measure, right? So when you see this type of a problem, we've got sine 54 over 8. Equal to. We don't have an angle measure for R, but this is a triangle, and it does sum 180, the angle sum 180. So we can find the measure of angle R, right? Isn't angle R going to be equal to 180 minus the 37 minus the 54? So let's find that angle measure. And I get 89 degrees. So the measure of angle R now is 89 degrees. So the second part of our proportion is going to now be sine 89 over x. So again, crisscross multiply. Sine 54x equals sine 89 times 8, and then divide both sides by sine 54. The sine 54s cancel, the x falls down, and we got 89 sine times 8. Make sure you hit the equal sign, and then we're going to divide by 54 sign and hit equals, and I got 9.9. Questions? Okay, let's take a look at example two up on the page or up on the top of page 589 and draw that triangle HJK and then we'll, uh, that'll be our last example problem and then we'll, I'll give you some problems to do for practice. And angle H is 45 degrees, angle J is 73, side HJ is 10, side KJ is the X we're trying to find. And again, we've got an angle and its opposite side, which is what we're trying to find. We got sine 45 over X. But then the other side value, we don't have an angle measure that corresponds to it. 
And for the angle measure that we do have, we don't have a value that corresponds to it. So when we're writing our proportion, we've got to have three values. All right, and only one variable. So let's find the measure of angle K because it's opposite the side that's 10. So angle K is going to be equal to 180 minus 73 minus 45. which is 62 degrees. So now we can write the proportion, sine 45 over x is equal to sine 62 over the 10. Crisscross multiply, so sine 62 times x is equal to sine 45 times 10. I'm sorry, times 10. <clears throat> Divide both sides by sine 62. The sine 62s are going to cancel, the x falls down, and the rest goes in the calculator. 45 sine times 10 equals, and then divide that by 62 sine and hit equals. And we should get 8. Anybody not get eight? Anybody have any questions? If you're given the angles and they're opposite sides, or if you're given an angle and its opposite side is the variable, you're fine. You can just set up the proportion. But if you're missing an angle measure, just use the angle sum theorem. Subtract the two given angles from 180, find the third angle, and then write your proportion. The sine of an angle over its opposite side, okay? Sine of an angle over its opposite side is equal to sine of an angle over its opposite side. All right, can anybody tell me why we didn't use the 73? A little louder? Very good. It doesn't have a variable or a value as its opposite side, so we didn't need to use it. We're only concerned with the variable and the side length given, and then we need the angles opposite of those. All right, so your practice for today is going to start on page 592. One through four. And then over on the next page, 12 through 20. Make sure you're checking your odd answers in the back of the book. and that you're getting your electronic assignments completed in a timely manner. You're better off getting those done sooner than later because they close at the end of the week. <clears throat>